Hello, ninth graders. I miss you all. I hope you are all in great health. Today, we're going to start a new grammar topic, which is the participle clauses. You can find these in your student book, page 87, and workbook, page 78. Before I go into more details, okay, let us explain what do we mean by participle clauses. As you know, a clause is we agreed that it is a phrase or a sentence with a complete idea. So when, we're, I'm, to, when I'm talking about participle clauses, that means that clause is going to start either with a present participle or with a past participle. Present participle form is the verb plus ing. That means an example is relaxing. The verb is relax and we add to it ing. The past participle is when we add to the verb an ed. That means relaxed. Participle clauses are sometimes also called reduce relative clauses. I think that will make it easier if you try to think of them as the relative clauses. They usually are going to add some more information to that now. Okay? So let's see what the text said. We can use participle clauses after a noun in the same way as relative clauses. This gives more information about the noun. Now, let's see how do these clauses work. Let's start with the present participle. We agree that a present participle is the verb when we add to it an ing. It can be used in the same way as an active relative clause. So that means an active relative clause. That means if we exchange that present participle with a relative clause, the verb has to be in the active form. Let's look at the example. The man driving the car is a friend of mine. Where is the present participle? Yes, driving. This is the present participle. Can you think of the clause that it replaced? Do you have an answer? So, the original one was, the man who is driving the car is a friend of mine. Okay, so this is the relative clause, okay? And is driving is the present continuous in the active form. The present participle can replace any active tense, not just the present continuous tense, like in the previous example. Now we're going to look at some other examples. Laurie is coming over the bridge. Have to be careful of the wind. Where is our present participle? Yes, coming. What is the original clause? Lorries that come over the bridge have to be careful of the wind. This is a present simple tense. Again, it is active. Let's have a look at another sentence. Who was the girl wearing the red dress? Where is the present participle? Wearing. As you can see here, we've used the past simple. So what's the relative clause? It is 
Who was the girl who was wearing the red dress? Students handing in their essay late will lose ten marks. Where is the participle close? It's handing. The sentence using the relative clause would be Students who hand in their essays late will lose 10 marks. Now let's look on how do we deal with the past participle. We agreed that the past participle is the verb plus ed. It can be used in the same way as a passive relative clause. So in this case, we are going to use it as a passive relative clause. Let's have a look at an example. We read the email sent by the manager. If you look carefully at the sentence, you can, see, you can see by the manager. So this can show you that you have to use the past participle, not the present participle. What's the original sentence? It is, we read the email that had been sent by the manager. Another sentence. This vase made in China in the 14th century is very valuable. As you can see here, it is very clear that this is a clause because it is between two commas. Okay, so if I want to get it back to using the relative clause, how would it be? I will give you some time. Let's see, did you get it correct? This vase, which was made in China in the 14th century, is very valuable. Again, this is the past participle. This is the relative clause that we can put in its place. She only eats cakes made by her mother. Where is it? Yes, made is the past participle. So we say she only eats cakes which are made by her mother. Yes, correct. things to notice. We generally don't use perfect participles having plus the past participle in this case. Okay, so we have another option from the participle clauses in which we use the perfect participle. We're not going to discuss it at this level, but you have to know that with these cases we do not use it. Two, we can't use this kind of participle clauses if we're talking about one finished action which is not repeated. For more illustration, let's look at the example. So, we're not allowed to say who was the girl dropping the coffee. In this case, we will go back to normal relative clause, the ones that we know, which are who, which, where, and it is followed by a clause. So the correct form is, who was the girl who dropped the coffee? I know it's a new topic, I know it's a bit confusing, but once we start doing our activities, I think everything is going to be clear.
Now let's have a look at our student book page 87. Look at the picture and read the text. Who painted the picture? And where can you see it? This picture, painted by the French artist Georges Seurat between 1884 and 1886, is called Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jette. It shows Parisians relaxing beside a lake on a sunny afternoon. The young men and women wearing their best Sunday clothes appear as calm and graceful as the sailing boats reflected in the water. This large picture measures approximately 200 centimeters by 300 centimeters is made up of thousands of tiny dots of color. Surat believed that this form of painting, now, no, now known as pointillism, would make the colors more brilliant. La Grande Jete permanently displayed in the art gallery in Chicago is Surratt's most famous work. This is, this is even as there is 